What's up, YouTube? Hello, my name is Adam Winrich, and this is a video about a routine that I do that I call the AW combination. Hey, Mom! Yeah, hon? Can I get a bull whip? Sure, babe. Just don't hurt yourself, okay? Thanks, Mom. Whatever gets him outside. <clears throat> Internet. Triple platted. Five feet. Twelve plat. David will do it. Short. Shot loaded. Sixteen Eight. flat. Nick's whip shot. Double plat. Thorn dot. Whack. Smooth action. Ten inch hand. Caliber. Fancy. Eight inch hand. One one. <laughs> okay, so maybe that was a little bit of an exaggeration, but there are a ton of factors involved in choosing your very own bullwhip. So today, I want to break down and demystify the process of choosing your very own bullwhip. And at the end of this video, I will show you how to create your own custom whip from my Etsy shop, Whipworks. And just a quick heads up, for the purposes of this video, I will only be talking about paracord bullwhips. The first thing to think about when choosing your own bullwhip is the length of the whip. The shorter the whip, the more difficult the whip is going to be to crack. It's going to take more precision, more um, finesse in your motion to get the crack out of the whip. The longer whips have so much energy going through them that they crack really, really easily. In general, the shorter the whip, the faster it's going to be and the softer the crack is gonna be. And the longer the whip, the more difficult it is going to be to handle, but the cracks are gonna be louder and more fun. So you need a whip that is short enough, that it's fast enough to do everything you want to do with it, and long enough that it's easy enough to crack, but not too long so as it's not too difficult for you to handle. I think that a great starting whip length is six or even seven feet. The next choice to make is the length of the handle of your whip. Now, the shorter the handle of your whip, the cooler it's going to look, the more classic bull whip feel it's going to have to it. But the longer the handle, the more accuracy you're going to have with the whip for if you're doing any sort of target practicing. A great example of this is Zorro's whip. Zorro is known for doing really accurate, like incredible, accuracy stunts with his whip, like snuffing out candles with his whip. He can do this because his whip has a very long handle. Indiana Jones, on the other hand, his whip only has an eight inch handle. And this makes his whip very compact and it just sits on his hip and he can grab it at a moment's notice to do whatever stunt he needs to do. I think that a 10 inch handle is a great middle ground. It's short enough that it still has that classic bull whip look to it, but it's long enough that you get a little bit of accuracy from it if you wanna get into target practicing. Next up, I'm going to go over some terms that you're gonna see thrown around. I'm gonna try not to go too in depth with these, but I think they're really important that you have a basic understanding of what they mean. The first of these factors is going to be a loaded core. This might also be referred to as shot loaded. All that this is referring to is the center strand of the bull whip being filled with either BBs or uh, steel shot. This adds weight to the front end of the whip, which allows for an awesome taper in the whip, and it also makes for a really fluid action in the whip. While loading a core will make your whip a little bit heavier, I still always recommend loaded cores. The next factor is layers of plaiting. 
You're gonna see whips referred to as double plaited or triple plaited. This refers to the amount of layers that are plaited into a whip. So a double plaited whip has two layers of plaiting and a triple plaited whip has three layers of plaiting. In general, the more layers of plaiting a whip has, the higher quality the whip is. I would just keep an eye out for triple plaited whips instead of double plaited whips. The next term you're gonna see thrown around is bolster. Now, all a bolster is, is some sort of a wrap that goes around one of the inner layers of plaiting. This allows for a more stiff transition between the handle and the rest of the whip or the thong. You will sometimes see whip makers cheaping out and they'll maybe only do two layers of plaiting and they'll fill extra space with bolster to make the whip more thick. So bolsters by themselves aren't necessarily a great thing, but bolster layers plus layers of plaiting are a very good thing. You will also see whips referred to as 12 plat, 16 plat, 18 plat. All that this refers to is the amount of strands in the final layer of plaiting. A thicker whip is going to need more strands in order to cover the entire handle. So a 12 plat whip will be significantly more thin than say an 18 plat whip and so on. The last little thing I want you to keep a lookout for is waxed versus unwaxed whips. Waxing your whip I think gives it a real professional touch. It gives it a kind of a matte finish and it looks great. It also makes your whip less likely to pick up discoloration from things that it comes in contact with. The biggest contributor to this is grass. But the most important thing that waxing your whip does is it makes your whip water resistant. So you don't have to worry about using your whip in slightly wet conditions or even snow. And finally, we get on to the important part, what your whip looks like. Now each whip maker has their own look and feel to the whips that they make. Some whip makers like to concentrate on making the handle of their whips one set of colors and the rest of their whip a different color or a different set of colors. Some whip makers like to concentrate on the order in which they organize the strands of their whip. So you get a really cool flowing design that changes as you get to the end of the whip depending on the order that you drop strands. I personally like two-toned whips. That's what inspires me. So I will take two colors and equally spread them on the whip and I will do a fancy plaiting design in the handle and for the rest of the whip, I'll just have a two-toned herringbone. So when you're picking out a whip, really be thinking about the final look, the final aesthetic that you want your whip to have. Now, let's take everything that we've just learned and head to the computer and order our very own custom bull whip. All right, here we are. First thing, let's head to Etsy.com and I'm going to search for a whip Let's uh, look for a custom paracord bolt whip. All right, so there are several whip makers here. Um, you can see my listings because I have the 12 foot, five foot, eight foot. Let's, uh, let's head to one of these. And let's actually go to my shop here. So if I click the link to the Whipworks Etsy shop page, you can see how I have my shop organized. I have all of my listings, then there's a pommeled whip section, a bull whip section, pre-made bull whips ready to ship, floggers, and we have our custom whip section. So let's order for this whip, let's say it's our first one, so let's order a six foot bull whip. Awesome, and if you scroll through the pictures, you'll see there's a handle designs picture and a color chart. We'll have to remember those for later. So first, let's choose our handle size. So under whip details, select an option. Let's go, um, let's go with a 10 inch handle. And then for waxing, um, it costs a little bit extra, but I want it waxed because I want to have that water resistance. All right, let's add to cart. And now 
I'm gonna need to add a couple notes here. So let's reopen the listing here and let's go over to the handle design chart and pick what handle design we want. So for this whip, I'm gonna go with the Egyptian eye because I really like how that looks. So I'm just gonna type in handle design, Egyptian eye. And now let's choose our two colors. So we'll go back to our listing and go over to the color chart. And I want this whip to be forest green and acid brown. So let's type in forest green and acid brown. So there you have it. And that's all you need. And then you proceed to check out and you either check out as a guest or with your Etsy account, and it's that simple. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that I gave you some helpful information in choosing your very own bullwhip. A quick shout out goes out to Adam Winrich, who I featured in that beginning sequence of this video. He's been a huge inspiration for me over the years with what he does with the whips, with all of his world records that he's broken. He is absolutely amazing. If you haven't checked out his channel, be sure to do that. Also, I woke up this morning to do some final editing on this video, and I have over a thousand subscribers. This is a huge deal to me. Thank you everybody for subscribing. Here's to the next a thousand. Thank you everyone for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and as always, happy cracking.